Hey everyone, today we have a $150 autofocus pancake lens for the Fuji X mount system. And that is from TT Artisan, the 27 millimeter F2.8. This is a pretty simple lens, so I'm gonna make a pretty simple video here. We have a very small and compact lens, basically almost a pancake, no, pretty much a pancake. The 27 millimeters equals out to about a 40 millimeter, and the nice part is that it's obviously very similar to the Fujifilm version. It's definitely not the same. I made a review on that lens in particular, and there are a decent amount of optical differences, but stylistically and size-wise, they're pretty similar. Similar enough that the amazing little square hood fits right on here. And while it's not like I'm gonna really be looking for a hood in terms of image quality for something like this, uh, this square hood does look really amazing on this little lens. And it was one of the things when I ended up selling my copy of the Fujifilm lens that I had, I was kind of bummed because I did like the look of it. So for the sake of ethics, I was sent this lens for the sake of this review. And I was also sent the square hood when I had ended up messaging them on Instagram about the hood and everything. So they sent it over to be sort of included in part of this video. So uh, that is my bias going into this. Take that for whatever you will. Now, I know a lot of people aren't exactly uh, jazzed on some of these TT Artisan, Seven Artisan, Chinese made lenses. One of the reasons that I am, especially about this particular lens, is that I just think that the more options and the more choices that a system has, the more I'm going to be likely to jump into that system because this lens, the 27 millimeter 2.8, isn't exactly like an exciting focal length and aperture combination, especially on a uh, you know APS-C camera. You're basically getting like a 40 millimeter ish with the uh, depth of field equivalency of like an F4 or so. So it's not like it's just like a, oh my gosh, what a cool lens. So to have an option that's 150 bucks to be able to just toss on here, it's kind of one of those things where like. I probably wouldn't want to purchase the Fujifilm version, but again, at 150 bucks, it's kind of like a, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll use it every once in a while, and maybe I'll you know, give it to my wife or my kids or something like that, and at that lower price point, I'm not really gonna worry about it as much, but it still produces a kind of a cool image. Now, I'll say also right off the bat that there are gonna be other kind of weird issues going on with this versus another lens. This actually does come with a uh, rear lens cap that also kind of double functions as the way to update the firmware on this since it's going to have focusing algorithms and things like that. So you aren't gonna be able to just update the lens via the body and stuff like a normal Fujifilm lens would be. But as it sits right now, it works great on my XE4 and I was very, very impressed with the autofocus. The autofocus in this is great, it's snappy, basically just no real issues to be had here. If you blindfolded me and you know, well, I guess not blindfolded me, but uh, if you just didn't tell me which lens this was, put it up to me and just said like, hey, do you think this is a Fujifilm lens in terms of just looking through the viewfinder and using it? Yeah, totally, rock and roll. Now I'll say the build quality is good, not great. Part of the reason why it's kind of amazing is it's just so light. Uh, yeah, I believe it's 94 grams. So this thing weighs just absolutely nothing. So for a full, you know, walk around kind of lens, fantastic. It does have a clicked aperture ring that does a pretty good job of staying kind of in the right spot. You do have to find the little knurled spaces here to grab it, which is kind of interesting. These Fujifilm lenses, I don't really do a lot of manual focusing on them anyway, um, but this actually feels pretty good. It's a little bit loose um, in terms of how I would prefer it, but not a deal breaker by any means. And for a lens at this price point, I think it just absolutely holds up to what I would expect.
Optically, this thing is, I mean, it's just a weird focal length where it's not gonna be a wow type of focal length anyway. But there's something that I do kind of like about it. It has that kind of like filmic point and shooty kind of thing where it's sharp and I have zero issues with the sharpness, but it's not like overly sharp, if that makes sense. Definitely not that clinical thing. You actually get some of that cat's eye kind of bokeh that swirls ever so slightly around the edges, which to me isn't a detriment. Some people don't like that, but I think that that kind of thing, especially in a lens like this, adds a little bit of character. I mean, there's not really a lot to it. There's not a lot that I'm gonna put into this because there's not a lot that I'm really expecting out of it. Do I think that this lens is good? Yes. Do I think that it's going to be something that I'm using as like a professional tool to like achieve a lot of my photographic goals? No, but is it going to be a lens that I could walk around with and throw in a bag and not really worry about and be more than happy for the price and the quality? Absolutely. I think it's one of those lenses that far outweighs how much it costs in terms of the return on investment that you get. So if you're interested in picking one of these up, you can do that in the description down below, as well as these straps from Clever Supply Co. I don't get anything uh, from the square hood stuff, but if you want to pop on one of these, I will also put the link down below. If you're interested in my original review of the Fujifilm version, you can check that out here, and I will see you all on the next one.